I want to welcome you to Focus on Liberia. In this broadcast, we're going to be doing a retrospective analysis of Liberian sports, going back all the way until you can't even remember. My guest is the former Deputy Minister of Youth and Sports, Republic of Liberia, the former coach of Invincible 11, IE, and also former player of both IE and the Lone Star, Honorable Mabu Riches. Mr. Richard, welcome to Focus on Liberia. Thank you very much. How are you? I'm doing wonderful. I'm we so also have been joined by the legend, Mama Musa. <laughs> Mr. <laughs> Musa, welcome to Focus on Liberia. Thank you very much, uh, Dennis. I appreciate your invitation. And uh, I'm sorry that I got on late, but you know, uh, I blame my ignorance of technology. And, and, and we are good. We, 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 we're just getting started. And uh, Mr. Okay. Benedict Wiese is my guest co-host. He's both uh, host and guest. And we're gonna be uh, sitting down here with Mr. Mambu Richard. So let me put it back to Benedict to uh, say his first word and introduce our guest. Okay, thank you very much, Dennis. Uh, coach, friend, mentor. What's up, buddy? Mabu Richards. Yeah. <laughs> thank you for accepting our invitation. Uh, we invited you here to um, address a speak to the Liberian people, introduce yourself to them even though they know who you are, but uh, we don't know, I'm um, included, we don't know Marble Ridges. So the purpose of this was, uh, is that we want for you to introduce yourself to the Liberian public, um, talk to us about your interest in sports, uh, what is driving you, uh, because it is, yes, now been a commitment of one year, two years, we're talking about a lifetime commitment to Liberian football and sports in general. So the, um, it is not about, you know, why this didn't happen, why this didn't happen, you are responsible uh, discussion. It is just something for us to reminisce, you know, and, um, and uh, make our public to come into the world of football to understand that uh, what we go through psychologically. So thank you very much for accepting the invitation. Well, thank you so much, uh, Benedict, for the invitation, Dennis. Thank you so much. Uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm an individual who, um, I, I would say, very shy individual. I try to stay out of the limelight, even though my lifestyle has kept me in the limelight. But um, I, I grew up in uh, Monrovia. My parents, Joseph and Anna Richards, uh, basically in the Cooper Farm area, Coconut Plantation, Newport Street area, that's where I grew up. Um, my DNA is is, uh, is is football. The reason I say that, my my late uncle, my father's older brother, Mr. John Howard, was the founder of the Liberia Football Association. Um, uh, Anthony Barclay, I think, was the first president of the Liberian Football Association. He uh, was my, my mother's uh, uncle. Uh, I think the first trophy, the Edwin Barclay Trophy, um, you know, was named after President Edwin Barclay. He was a cousin of my, my mother. And my father, Joseph Richards, founding member uh, of Invincible 11 and first captain. So as, as long as I've known myself, I've been around football. Um, I've had a passion. My dad used to take me on the football field when I was playing. Back in the day when Mr. Rushu Kanga, uh, Bruce Smith, uh, Tugwe Anderson, uh, Lawrence Morgan, uh, they were all members of the original IE team. So uh, they used to dress me up in the uniform and take me on the field when IE was playing. So football has been part of my life, uh, you know, as far as I've known. Um, I played uh, football in the neighborhood. And I would say that I got into to playing organized football through uh, Christopher Nippe, uh, Baba D, Julius D, um, Ishmael Rogers, 
they had a team called Rocket Section. <laughs> and uh, I was invited to join that team. The team played on Newport Street, where the Newport Street Junior High School is. Uh, at the time, the, the goalposts, one goalpost faced uh, uh, Mecklen Street, the other one, uh, Newport Street. It's not the, the way the modern uh, Newport Junior High field is, but that's where we used to play. And so that's how I got in, involved uh, playing for the first time on a team. Well, we moved uh, from Coconut Plantation area to Cinco, but um, during that period, uh, I got to uh, learn to play, play the game. My dad was very interested in seeing me develop. Uh, we moved into the neighborhood of uh, YWCA, with Tommy Bernard uh, compound. I was friends of Tommy Bernard's children, Tom, Thomas Jr., Fred. And we all used to play at the Tommy, the Tommy Bernard compound, what is now the CDC headquarters. And uh, I remember I had a team called Hot Spurs. I had traveled to England uh, back in the 60s, early 60s. And uh, while there, I fell in love with with Tottenham Hotspurs, and there was a player called Jimmy Greaves. And uh, so when I came home, I organized a team called Hotspurs, and some members of that team were Felix Kufa, Kuku Rare, Tia Fokufo, and uh, Foki Nippi. You know, so our, our relationship was going way back to the early 60s, early and mid 60s. Uh, living in that neighborhood, I also uh, started playing football uh, with a group on the old road, uh, George Telewoda, Roland Barnes, uh, John Saul, Arthur Harris, and others. But I was also at CWA playing. Uh, I was one of the younger, youngest players on the CWA team, uh, 1966 to 1969. Uh, I had the, the honor and privilege of, of playing along with Tape Roberts, uh, Emmett Dennis, Dr. Emmett Dennis, Francis Cape or some of those that I played along with, Ahmed Ba. I think some of you may know Ahmed Ba. Mr. Uh, Richards, we, yeah. we, I see uh, Benedict just smiling and we are just enjoying <laughs> what you say. You keep saying you were playing. What were you playing? Were you in the goal post? Were you number five? What no, I was, I was a right winger, number seven player. Oh, okay, it looked like that's also seven on the show tonight because I must have <laughs> <laughs> You know, I, I had the opportunity, I mean, I was privileged to have had my the first actual coach I had was the late J.D. Daniels. He played for Barrow. He was a left winger for Barrow and also, I think, captain yeah. for Barrow, captain for the national team. And uh, it is uh, Coach Daniels who basically gave me uh, my foundation, taught me the basic fundamentals of football. But because I was so young, 14 years old at the time playing, um, he, he basically restricted what I should do. He said to me, being so young and small, and the players that we were playing against were more matured. He said that he didn't want to see me dribbling. I had good speed. Uh, he wanted to just see me crossing footballs. He didn't want me mixing up. So I learned to cross uh, the football from a, the wing position, left foot and right foot. I was good with both feet. And so I never became the traditional uh, winger, like, like Benedict or Waka Heron, that type of thing, or wizard dribbler. I was one of those guys who just played basic football, give me the pass, walk pass, get myself open, make sure I don't make some faulty passes, make sure I made, made a lot of assists. And so I played simple, uh, simple football. And, and over the years, I, I, I always said, keep it simple. Yeah. So if you do the basic things right, you can succeed. But um, I played high school football up until 1969 when I left Liberia to it. 10 school in the United States. I finished my last year of high school in the United States in Connecticut. And little did I know that playing for Laurel Crest Preparatory School, there was a referee who handled two of our matches. Uh, we played a team called Kingsley Hall. And in that match, uh, there was a guy called Mums Mambori. He became Commerce Minister of Gambia. In that game, the first match, he scored and I scored. The game ended 1-1. In a return match, the game ended 3-3. Three, three. He scored three, and I scored three. Wow. And uh, I got a letter from a number of schools, the University of Bridgeport, New Hampshire, 
and uh, Vermont. Uh, Vermont offered me a scholarship to go there, but I realized it was going to be too cool being up in Vermont. <laughs> I, I like the warmer weather. But I also saw in the brochure from Bridgeport that they had two, three players there from the, from the West Indies. And so I opted to go to Bridgeport. Uh, uh, I got there just in time for the, the first, first uh, match of the season. I had practice on, on a Monday. We played Wednesday. And I got an opportunity to play in that match. And uh, we played City College of New York. We beat them 9-2. I got in there. And within the first five minutes of me get on the field, I had an assist. Uh, I had a second assist. And uh, so my, my introduction at Bridgeport was, was pretty good. Uh, the next match we played was again Bait College in, in Maine. And to my surprise, I was selected to start. And I remain a starter on Bridgeport team uh, from then on. But I played through, through college. We won the uh, Indo Championship uh, at the University of uh, Connecticut. Uh, I did a, a, my bachelor's degree in management. Uh, I returned to Liberia on vacation in uh, 1974 and had an opportunity to be selected by Coach Josiah Johnson. There was a team traveling, national team traveling to, to Germany for training. And uh, I had the opportunity to be selected and we trained for three, three weeks in Germany. We will talk about that. But my involvement in sports uh, is linked also to my interest in education. I, I believe that, you know, growing up, a lot of the kids that I played with, uh, their parents couldn't afford for them to go to school. Mm -hmm. They were, I, I consider myself privileged. My, my parents were, were of means. We, you know, we had, I had just about everything I, I needed and a lot of things that I wanted, but I realized that a lot of my friends didn't have. And uh, so I used to always share. My mother used to tell me, you always used to give your clothes away, your toys away. Uh, but, but I've always had this, this, this thing in the back of my mind that uh, I had the opportunity to go to school and I should commit myself to making it possible for others also to enjoy some of the things that I have enjoyed. One of those things is education. So I always believe that education and football, you know, went hand in hand. And so mm -hmm. everything I've been doing over the years, all, even up until now, uh, with sports has been tied to education. Um, so I, I served government twice as assistant minister during the Toba administration through part of the Doe administration, um, and then deputy minister during uh, Madam Salif's uh, the first term of Madam Salif's uh, administration. And I'm currently residing in, in Habel. I work with the education department there. I uh, coordinate extracurricular activities for the school system. Firestone has 26 schools, uh, wow. currently 6,000 students. So I'm responsible. I organize all of the quizzing, debates, field trips, um, sports, and, and, uh, and what, whatever. I also have a an academy, a soccer academy, uh, which was focused on teaching life skills through football. Um, the academy started in 2012. Currently, um, we have a team now, a third division team in the league in Margibi. And uh, so in a nutshell, this is my life. I've been married. Uh, July will make 44 years. Uh, we have five children, nine grandchildren. and. Uh, mm -hmm. I mean, you know, I just thank God for, for his grace and his mercies. Wow. And thank God. Before I bring in uh, the senior player, you know, first let us know that uh, all of us here tonight, we are e fans. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so okay. so uh, you said something very important. Thank you so much. Ladies and gentlemen, if you are just joining us, this is Focus on Liberia. Our guest is Mr. Mambu Richards. His whole life has been committed to sports, especially football. And with me in his, as guest co-host is someone who uh, Mr. Richard uh, has some uh, fingerprints on. And you can see him there. Uh, oh, yeah. And we said, <laughs> yeah. he's the one kneeling there. You see Mr. Richard there with the uh, with Mr. Samuel Bennett. The, yeah. These are the names that we remember. Uh, Bennett, is that Joe Namwe? 
Yeah, no. Joe Nambe and oh, Sheko Nambe. So you got some players no, there? Anthony Nambe, not Joe Nambe. Anthony oh, Nambe. not Joe Nambe. Sorry, Anthony. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, Mamu. Oh, okay. So, yeah, we see Tia Fokofo, J. Manu Moyen, James D. Finlay, A.C. Grillin, Benedict Wieser, of course, Mama Musa. So it's I, that's my mistake. That's Anthony Nambe, not Joe Nambe. Anthony and, Nambe, yeah. And Magic Hans Seku Gomez. Yeah. But, Mr. Richard, you stressed something important in your school and football at that time. That's not what really we, we knew. School, uh, football was looked at as people who were not serious for school. So your case is very different. How so? Well, you know, um, th th this thing about stigmatizing players as grown-up boys and people who would, would not be anything in life, you know, uh, uh, when, when I look at uh, those who played with my father, my father, for example, was a mining engineer. Um, Lawrence Morgan was a lawyer. Uh, you know, there were the, the, CD, the IE team was formed by students from CWA and at the time, Liberia College. They were students. So, IE football team, you know, were students. Uh, so, I look at Sam Burnett, for example, Sam, Sam Burnett was an electrical engineer. Uh, Charles Wolfer used to play for, for IE before he went to Barrow. He has a PhD in agriculture. Um, Alexander Peel, for example, former Barrow and Lone Star goalkeeper. Okay, he was, uh, I don't know what he still is, but he was in charge of the, the Sapo National Forest. I'm just saying there were so many um, individuals who played football who um, were educated, who went to school. But uh, a lot of kids who, who were playing didn't have the opportunity. Yeah. Uh, and so for me, I've always felt that I've been privileged. God has blessed me in a way, and I should use whatever blessing he has to pass on to others. And for, for me, I believe that education opens up opportunities for, for individuals, that, that through education, um, life, life, uh, lives can be changed. And so for me, I, I, I've always seen it as an opportunity to, to help others uh, change their life and make their lives better. So um, wh whenever and however I could help people uh, in terms of uh, gaining an education, supporting them in school, this is what I've been able to do. Even when I was at the ministry, uh, I talked about Bridgeport, for example. Uh, we, Benedict here, um, I had gone to the University of Liberia when I was at the ministry as assistant minister, and I said to the authorities there, uh, a lot of our national team players were, were students, juniors and seniors in high school. The, the Albert Nan, the Amelia Freeman, the Sakba, Benedict, uh, and others. I said to them, uh, we knew that the university was trying, was selecting the best students those who took the exams and wanted the best students to enter the university. And I said to them, by virtue of these players playing on the national team, if they pass the entrance, they should be, they should be granted the opportunity to go to school. And they, 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 their response was basically, we're looking for the best. And fortunately for me, I got a call from my late coach, uh, Fran Bacon, and he asked me if I had any players who I could recommend to go to the university. And without thinking, I nominated Benedict. And Benedict traveled to Bridgeport. And I think from his first game, uh, he became known in the area as Magic Benny yeah. because he performed magic on the, on the football field. And uh, so that's how this whole situation through Benedict's performance, uh, Amadou Sana, Clay Andrews' performances, other coaches on the East Coast started seeing Liberian players and then they started recruiting players. And so people started blaming me for our national team players all <laughs> going to the States on scholarship. But you know, at, during that period, um, we didn't have professional players. Everybody wanted to go to school. I remember even one time we played, I think we played Kotoko in Ghana and the Ghanaians were trying to get Benedict uh, to go and play pro ball. And he said to me, I want to go to school. I want to go to school. So I think, you know, as, as a greater player as Benedict uh, was at the time, if he had chosen to go to play professionally, I mean, Liberia's names would have been on the map long, long time ago, but his 
focus was on gaining an education. So today I'm very proud that uh, a good majority of the, the, the young footballers who went to the, or came to the United States, because I'm here now, uh, were able to complete their, their college education. Some have master's degrees, CPAs, some working on their doctorate degree. So I'm very proud that, you know, those who chose to come to school took advantage. And today they are supporting their families in, in a meaningful way and, and making contributions, sending back uh, money to, to support, you know, individuals back home. But when, when we started to go pro, I think 86 or whatever it was, a lot of students now decided to put education aside and go after the dollar. And so they started jumping from schools and, you know, uh, following the professional uh, um, ranks. And uh, unfortunately, many of those who, who chose that route after their playing days, they have nothing really to fall back on. Yeah. Uh, some of them, you know, did in fact decide to go back and finish school. Uh, uh, Jonathan Sogwe, for example, is, is one case. Uh, uh, the late Frank Seaton was, was uh, I think about to graduate just before he died. Uh, so some of them realized that, you know, I played professionally. I had the opportunity to realize my dream, but in order for me to, to advance myself, I need to put something upstairs. And I've always said to people, whatever you put up here, nobody can take it away from you. No. So um, as an athlete, as a football player, one tackle could end your career. One tackle could end your career. So what do you have to fall back on? Yeah. Uh, so this is what I continue to preach even with the kids in my academy program. Uh, that program is all about, uh, about being in school. Uh, the criteria for being a part of that program is that you must be a student. Okay, if you're not in school, try to get in school the next semester or the next academic year. Uh, we monitor their grades. If you're failing in more than one subject, you don't play. You know, those, those are the kinds of things we focus on. And right now, my third division team comprises, uh, I would say, 85% students. Uh, I just had 10 of them graduate from high school. Um, you know, so this is where if you want, if you want to eat money from Abu Riches, tell me you want to go to school. <laughs> and and one, person, one person who ate that money because he wanted to school is here with, with us. Mr. Wissett. Well, I, I know better than never in my money, I will tell you, I will tell you that. I'll be very honest, you know. I mean, that's why I'm, I admire him so much. He's, he's a very dear friend. Um, you know, he's he's always been focused. Uh, I remember uh, visiting his, his room there, uh, you know, when he was playing for IE, and he had books all, all around the place, you know. I mean, he had his bed, but there were books piled up all over the place. He, you know, always trying to... Uh, uh, you know, better himself to continue to learn. And so that's one of the things I really admire about him. Janine, it's all yours. <laughs> yep. Any question, okay. any comment? Yeah. Um, yeah, so when, when you went home, when you returned home after your graduate study, uh, I was there playing for IA. Uh, but you know, even though in your explanation you um, disclose, you know, the reason of your passion, you know, for football, uh, there are many librarians with just uh, passion. Uh, but after they have uh, gained personal successes, they you know, they uh, do not commit themselves to football. But there must have been, even though you, you touch on some of the things, but to, after graduating to go back to Liberia and go into coaching, you know, while you were working as government officials. Well, well, you know, Benedict, uh, I, I you as, um, yeah, okay. I remember. Go, go ahead. No, I remember after the practice. Uh, yeah, after the practice um, in Senko, uh, you waited for me. After, you know, I went. I took shower, everything, and we took 
And uh, I was trying to get to Ghana's way. And then uh, we stopped right at, uh, Mat um, or at Matera New Newport, the maternity center area there. Yeah, we stopped right there. And for an hour, you know, <laughs> Dennis Mabu went on with his football, so, you know, strategy, you know. At that time, I, I was not playing uh, 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 number seven. I was, I would say, a utility player. Sometimes I play center power, sometimes left wing for IE, sometimes right wing. You know, so there was not a defined position for me. But Mabu was able to, you know, uh, do that. So um, the question I'm, I'm asking is, is that when you decided to commit yourself to actually being a coach in Liberia? Okay. Um, Why? Well, yeah. Uh, Okay, basically, again, um, when, when I finished school in 75, I came home and I played with IE during the 76 season. Uh, I decided to go back and do a master's degree. So I went back uh, and I came back in 70, 78. In 78, I came back to, to make the IE team. We had a Ghanaian coach. So I was, I was there with, Ab with Abona, with Mile, with Sakwa and others. Uh, I, I came back to, to make the team. Our coach left and came to the United States. And so Jericho, Joker, and others decided that I should serve as a player coach until I could get a coach. And so Sam Burnett, being the president, agreed. But we were preparing ourselves for the 1979 league. And we started playing test matches, you know, different places. And we played in in uh, in Basel against a team called Babe of Buchanan. And I started the game as a right winger. And at halftime, I had to analyze the game and you know talk about making substitution. Something just said to me, you know, decide whether you want to be a player or you want to be a coach. And so I substituted myself at that particular point and said I will be a coach until we can find somebody. And so that's how I got into coaching IE. We played the calendar tea. Mrs. Toba had a, a annual calendar tea uh, event, and we played Barrow in that match. I remember going on TV with Mr. Miller, the team manager of Barrow, and bragging about who will win the game and so forth and so on. Barrow beat us in the first minute. Kuku Red scored that goal. And from that day, I said, I would never brag. We, even if we played kindergarten 11, I would never brag about winning games. But, um, the, the highlight, what really drew me in was that when the Chinese came to Liberia to sign the contract to, for the stadium, to build a stadium, they brought a team with them. And I think the, the national team at the time was preparing for the Six Nation tournament. And uh, Lone Star was camping in, in Yekipa with the, the German football advisor, Mr. Troutman. So they came down and they played the Chinese to a draw. I was working as a labor relations officer at the Ministry of, at the time, Labor, Youth, and Sports. And uh, the uh, assistant in was sports was Mr. Willis Knuckles. And so apparently he told Minister Bernard, Estrada Bernard, that, you know, Mabu coaches IE, maybe the IE can play these people. So I was sent for by Minister Bernard and asked whether IE uh, could play the Chinese. And we, we accepted the challenge and we beat the Chinese 4-0. And then I got assigned after that to join Josiah Johnson and Victor Sear in Bongman to prepare the, six, the team for the Six Nation tournament. We won the, the championship, uh, 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 the Six Nation uh, trophy. IE won the, the double championship in 79. Um, you know, so that's, that's how I got into, into coaching. Um, it wasn't my, my intent to get into coaching, but I got, you know, drawn into it in, in that light. And, uh, but I also, uh, you know, one of the inspirations I had was a gentleman called Peter Jackler, PSJ. Uh, I think a lot of people remember PSJ. Benedict, you know PSJ. Oh, Claro um, yeah. 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 PSJ dedicated his life to, to training young footballers. And I, I always call, refer to him as the father of football academies in, 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 in Liberia. Uh, I remember 
uh, players like Jimmy King, and Oliver McCaw, and Kevin, and Dinesha's, and then they used to be playing first show when we had, you know, matches, tournaments, and stuff like that. But I, I saw how much this 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 gentleman did how he dedicated his life to to training young footballers, and and I said to myself, this is the future for football. You know, we have to this what is now termed grassroots football, and so. Because of what he was doing, and I was at the ministry, I was able to get him on the payroll as a local coach, okay, uh, so that at least he had something every month, you know, uh, for for the services that he was performing. But um, having observed him and, and and seeing what he was doing and realizing that the future of Liberian football uh, rests in our ability to to develop at the grassroots level, so. Um, that's why even after um, you know being with RE for a number of years I, I asked the administration to allow me to organize uh, to re reactivate the Majestic team, the RE junior team and I brought on that team we, we selected some players from, from, from our local teams, we brought Kevin Sigbe, we brought that we brought uh, Thomas Kojo uh, Walter Pella myself had flown to Hopper looking for players Simon Mata was on that team. Josephus Queer was on that team. And uh, so the idea was to focus now on, on building a youth team for, for IE. Okay, so that's that's basically how mm -hmm. I got into to coaching, Benedict. Uh, it wasn't my intent. Okay. I, I really wanted to play on the team, uh, but um, that's how I got into coaching. Okay. Now I want for you to put, uh, put your administrator's hat on. Uh, as someone who uh, work in the Ministry of uh, Youth and Sports, uh, you know, we have football in Liberia and we also have other sports. Why it is a uh, thing like boxing, sports like boxing, sports like uh, tennis, lawn tennis, basketball, uh, have not been able to rise to the level that uh, football has been able to, to reach? Well, OK, let me and just let me, say, mm -hmm. let, me, let me say this. I, I, think, I think it's a whole mentality going, going way back, the mentality that, uh, you know, uh, athletes were, quote, unquote, considered grown-up people. Um, I, I, I think. Um, unlike uh, f former colonized uh, countries where they had uh, a structure laid down for sports and stuff, we, we were just doing things on our own. Uh, at one point, we did track and field back in the 60s because uh, I remember my dad took uh, a team to the Olympics. We had track and field back then, volleyball, like we were won the West African Championship with Eugene Peabody and Willis Knuckles and and uh, uh, Waldron Woods and, and some others. Uh, basketball, um, I remember when I was in high school, I was very competitive, CWA, Riggs Institute, uh, Swim Mission, like Kerry, other schools. But but let, let me just say, let me come to the period 2006, when I got to the ministry as uh, Deputy Minister for Sports. Uh, to my greatest surprise, uh, I got there about maybe six weeks before we were supposed to submit the budget for 2006-7. And so uh, Assistant Minister Murphy Gray, Walter, Walter Anderson, uh, Navarro Siki were in, were in the department. And I asked for the budget, the 2005-6 budget, so that we could you know, develop the 6-7 budget. And to my greatest surprise, the total budget for sports development was less than 40,000 United States dollars. <laughs> that money was there only to pay the salary of the staff in the bureau. There wasn't a penny in the budget for any sporting federation or association. There wasn't a penny in the budget to pay any international dues. We owed the Supreme Council of Sports 220,000 United States dollars. We had not paid dues since the 80s. There wasn't any money in the budget for the national teams. There wasn't any money in the budget 
for counting meat. Now, we're coming in after the civil crisis. And we went to our budget hearing. And I put in requests for basketball, athletics, uh, um, boxing, uh, table tennis, all of the different sports that we had. And it was very difficult trying to convince the committee to give us the money because the priorities coming out of the wall basically was what health, education. And so that first year, we really struggled. Okay, they gave us $300,000 for all of our national teams. What can $300,000 do? Mm. If you're really talking about developing, talking about playing international competition. So I'm just saying the whole mentality was sports. Yeah. <laughs> you know, for example, I said there was a need for sports for the disabled. And it, they basically told me, you're crazy. Cripple people, we're putting money for cripple people. And it's not until the amputee football team went to Sierra Leone and played and came second in that competition there that the next year when we went in, we put in our budget, everybody wanted to support amputee football. Okay? So we had money there for basketball, for athletics, for table tennis. Uh, as I said, when I got to the ministry, there was, wasn't a penny for any, any sporting federation. When I left the ministry, there were subsidies in the budget for 21 federation and associations because I realized our mission there was to develop sports, not football, okay? And maybe those who were, were in positions prior to me didn't see uh, sports as being uh, more than football. I remember there's a, there was a joke where they said one former minister asked whether basketball was sport, okay? So if when people who are in charge, who are, are leading the, 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 the charge for sports don't see beyond football, then there's a problem. I mean, I struggle with, with, with many of the federations because everybody with, with the little subsidy that we give, we, we give to the federation association, everybody was interested in traveling. They were not interested in developing the sports, okay? Uh, table tennis, for example, the late Lloyd Brunel, who was the, the president, was the only federation that was putting emphasis on developing kids. And he, at the workshop, the table tennis workshop, you had kids six and seven years old learning to how to play table tennis. He made small tables for them. Uh, with the subsidies that he had, he, he made more than 50 tables during the period that, that uh, prior to his death. More than 50 tables and he took them all around. I remember he said, took table tennis tables and, and equipment to Basel, to Bong Man, to, to Firestone in different communities trying to promote the sport. All right. Uh, none of the other federations were interested, even football, they were not even interested in grassroots football. You couldn't find the, uh, the football association supporting any grassroots programs, you know, anywhere in the country. Anywhere in the country. I mean, they had people who had, for example, Father Johnson has a, an academy program. You know, kids, he converted his house and he has about maybe 15 or 20 kids that live there. But the Football Federation was not even supporting. Archie Bidel had a program to say, give them balls, give them bibs to support their programs. You know, so um, it's, 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 not, it's not just, uh, you know, the issue of, of uh, sports not wanting to be developed. You must have people who are committed who have sports, uh, you know, at heart, have the youth at heart. Um, when, when, when we got to the ministry, the county meet games, we had football, kickball, and basketball. We added athletics and we added volleyball. Today, the last county meet, kickball and football. What happened to volleyball? What happened to basketball? What happened to athletics? <laughs> I mean, you would think that you'll be adding you know, more disciplines as you go along. But <laughs> we've gone from five disciplines to two. And, and, and I'm sure if, if, if things, you know, you, you've been hearing, there was some talk one time, uh, let's do away with kickball and, and, and focus on, on uh, female football. Now, kickball is the second most uh, uh, popular sport in terms of participation. Football, yes. Basketball 
it's popular in Monrovia and stuff, but everywhere you go, every community, you go, every little village, people playing kickball. Yeah. Okay. And uh, we even tried at one time to encourage the kickball association or federation to extend the game beyond Liberia and go to Sierra Leone. Because I'm told that if five or six countries uh, are participating in a particular sport, it may be, it may be considered as a, a sport to be included in the Olympics. So we're saying, why don't we take a group to, to, to Sierra Leone? We have Liberians in Sierra Leone, in Ghana, in Ivory Coast, and organize and promote the game of kickball. That never, you know, nobody ever picked up on it. Uh, Mr. Richard, I, I understand kickball uh, started in Liberia. Is that true? No, kickball is an American game. Yeah. Oh, okay. Lemuel Sherman and them, you know, are the ones who really organize it in terms of a federation wise, but missionaries, the people, you know, those missionaries that were here, St. Teresa's Convent people, you know, I remember when I was in school at uh, Phoebe Campus School on, it was a Lutheran school on campus, Phoebe Campus, the girls, they used to play kickball. You know, this is this is 63 to six, uh, 66, 60, yeah. They were playing kickball. So it's not, the game wasn't developed in, in Liberia. It's an American sport. It, it's patented after softball and baseball. Right. Uh, but again, Benedict, to answer your question, you must have people who, who are committed, who have the desire to see things happen, okay? To see things happen. And, and for me, it was a struggle because my vision, a lot of people, you know, um, they didn't see what I saw. Yeah. Okay, they, they, and, and, and so in, in many respects, I, I had a lot of difficulties in dealing with, with um, the federations, trying to, to uh, get them to do what is necessary to, to promote the sport. And I say again, I go back and say, I don't care how much money you put into the senior national football team. If you don't focus on the grassroots programs, the football will never develop. And that's what been happening. I'm happy now with the new leadership under Mustafa Raji, there's greater emphasis on grassroots programs. I mean, in, in Habel, for example, under 12 tournament, under 15 tournament, under 17 tournament, okay, under 19 tournament. And that's the way we have to go. Right. And Mr. So, Richard, I keep making reference to developing sport, develop sport. So when you say develop sport, what does that require or what does that entail? Well, it, it, it requires a commitment from government to provide the infrastructure, okay, to be able to, to you know, uh, provide fields and build stadiums and, and so forth. You know, um, when the coup happened, uh, 1986, I think is when the SKD stadium was completed, um, there in, in that original plan was supposed to be a multi-million dollar gymnasium. There's a building, I think one of Charles Taylor's uh, relatives has a structure there, it's fenced. That's where the gymnasium was supposed to have been built. Okay, a multi-purpose gymnasium that would have rooms for, for, for boxing, room for uh, wrestling, table tennis, you know, and different things like that besides the regular handball and stuff, but that whole project was postponed. We'll do it later. And so it never happened because the focus is sports is football. Sports mm -hmm. is not athletics. Sports, sports is not basketball. Sports in the Liberian a man's uh, mind is football. And so until, you know, that mindset is changed, we'll continue to be where we are. Benedict? Yeah. Uh, another question it has to do with the history of football. Uh, it is my understanding from what I have read. Uh, I can say that based on what I have read, football came to Liberia through the American Liberian community. You know, through Sierra Leone, uh, you talk about Mr. Barclay, uh, Mr. Howard. Well, I, um, I, 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 you know, I mentioned my, my uncle John Howard, but um, he yeah. he went to school. He went to school in in Sierra Leone. Okay, mm -hmm. he went to school in Sierra Leone, 
And so uh, my, my, my grandmother was married twice. Her older kids went to school in Sierra Leone. And so when my uncle came back, you know, uh, uh, the, great, the great barman team, for example, you know, were, were, they were not American Liberians, you know. So a lot of those, those guys uh, either had come from, from down the coast, went to Ghana or whatever, and came back. Mm -hmm. But, um, as, you know, in terms, I mentioned the Barclay name, President Barclay. I mean, that's, again, a trophy name after him. But mm -hmm. uh, my uncle happened to have been the one who, who organized the football association. Uh, but I, I, there were teams that came in. Okay. The, the Cole brothers, for example, came, they, they came from Sierra Leone, and Mo Cole and others. And they, they had a team, OK? Um, they led Emmett Cooper. And, and them up there, uh, uh, what is now the bypass uh, at the end of Keir Street, he had his place. So William E. Dennis had a had a had his house there. There was a few called Dennis Field. So there were those who played, you know, some of the American Liberians, if you want to use that, that played played the game. But I don't know mm -hmm. if they were the ones that introduced the game to, to Liberia. I don't, I don't know that. Okay. Yeah, because what I read, you know, is, what you just explained about Mr. Howard returning to Liberia or going to school in the Sierra Leone and coming back to uh, to Liberia, and it's my understanding that it was true that uh, uh, because the British they were in Sierra Leone and uh, and those who came from as far as the Caribbean, you know, was were playing football in Sierra Leone and, uh, and managed to uh, take it to Liberia. But uh, my, my question, my next question is, now you have been in Liberia, uh, even though what you just explained, uh, you have mentioned, you have made references to some of the difficulties uh, in Liberia right now. From, your, from what you have observed, uh, what is the state of Liberia football in sports in general, what would it be in the next, let's say, five years? Is that well, something to be optimistic about? Let me let me say let me speak about football because I, I really don't know. Um, I, I will mention a little bit about basketball too. Uh, with respect to football, I think mm -hmm. uh, since that period under which we we failed to qualify, you know, for the World Cup. I believe that there hasn't been much football development in the country. Um, uh, I got to the Ministry of Youth and Sports in 2006. And one of the battles I had with the Football Association and, and people at one point, they, you know, I, I became, what is it, public enemy number one <laughs> for football because I, I was vocal about the, the need to uh, to focus on development, on grassroots football. I questioned the LFA in terms of, they, they have what they call the financial assistance package that FIFA gave. There's a certain percentage for women's football, there's a certain percentage for grassroots football. And my question was, what is being done for grassroots football? All of the money that was being spent was on the senior national team, okay? And I said, national senior national team, should continue to play in competition so that they don't ban us from participating. But our emphasis should be on developing the under 15, the under 17, you know, so that two or three years of proper training, these guys will be able to represent Liberia, you know, on the international scene. And for me, I always believe that you do not build a house from the roof, you build it from the foundation. And I think with football, we're focusing on on the roof, the mm. senior national team, and not focusing on 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 the on the foundation. I remember the late coach Biski. I think he was from Hungary. He was there as national team coach. And I was at SKD, I mean ATS, and he was sitting in the stands, and not too far from him, a couple of seats away. And I saw him shaking his head, and I asked him, "I said, Coach, what's wrong?" He said. I'm teaching the national team players basic fundamentals when I should be teaching them strategies. 
And that that statement, you know, uh, stuck with me because he was saying that these players who are, quote, the best players that we have don't have the basic fundamentals. It's like a student, you know, if you don't know how to read, you don't know uh, uh, your, your, your timetables and stuff, you can't do well in math. You can't, if you don't have the basic, if you can't read, I don't care how far you, you put them put in a senior class right now, that joker there will not be able to read. Okay, so unless you you focus on the foundation, which is grassroots sports, all right, going into the communities, putting the best for me, the best coaches we have should be at that level. Mm. Now, currently, the under 15 and under 17 coach, national coach, Ansu uh, Keita, he was the technical director, as I understand, technical director of the PSG Academy in Canada, okay? PSG Academy in Canada. So this is somebody who has come to work with the under 15 and under 17, who knows about developing, who knows about academy football. Now, let me let me just go back and say this. The, the football that was being played, i.e. in Barrow, and, and you know, back in the 70s and stuff like that, you know, where when they say i.e. in Barrow, ready to play the stadium jam pack. <laughs> what you were watching was the results of St. Jerry, ABC, Young Warriors, uh, 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 Sadewon, Bright Stars, Argentina, all these little community teams, these kids who were playing in the communities, right? That was the result. Because kids played in Nukutan and they ended up playing for Barman, they ended up playing for St. Joseph. They had, had worked together for a long time. St. Jerry came into Majestic, to, to Majestic from Majestic into IE. ABC came from ABC to Emmanuel, Emmanuel into to Barrow. So uh, Young Warriors, as I said, when Young Warriors played uh, ABC or Young Warriors played St. Joseph, um, uh, uh, St. Jerry, when we when they came, came to Oro to Hayward Mission to play us or we went to Claritown to play in different places like that, the competition was there, all right? So these young players who have played together for a number of years, all right, came into IE, came into Barrow. So you saw the standard. So you have to start with the grassroots young pro, pro, uh, programs, teaching them basic fundamentals. Right now, uh, one of my players, uh, uh, Rafael Peters, is on the, the under 15 team on the way to, to, to Sierra Leone, all right? Teaching basic fundamentals. Another one of my players was recruited to the under 20 national team, okay? So I'm just, you, we have to focus on that. Right now, there's a group called Friends, Friends and Supporters of Liberian Basketball. Okay, Anthony Fano, uh, uh, my sister Dawn, Isaac Tukba, and others. Uh, they organize themselves. They are now uh, assisting programs in different communities in, 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 in Liberia. They, they're renovating basketball courts. They're organizing community teams and community tournaments and stuff like that to support the national basketball program. Mm -hmm. All right. So this is where we have to go. We have to start by building facilities, mm -hmm. having facilities in the community. Look, every school in the United States has some playing facilities. You can't have a school unless you have a playground somewhere for the kids to have recreation. All right. Mm -hmm. But check out Monrovia, Charlotte Tobo. You have play, you had you have playground. JJ 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 Ross on, on Ashman Street. They got playground. You just get a building, you put a school. So the whole issue of sports and recreation and education, it's, it's not in our, in our thinking. So, so Mr. Richards, have we really understood the benefits of our sports? Or have we made that connection between sports, education, recreation, all these things? Because it, it seems to me, if we don't get that uh, on a policy level, that would be difficult. So, Tell me a little bit about the benefit. Maybe that's what we have not gotten yet. Yeah, I mean, you, you, you don't only develop the mind. You have to develop the body. The two go hand in hand, okay? So sports and recreation is important because I'm just saying through, through sports, for example, like I, like, I, like I tell my players, the, the kids in my academy, I say you're on the football field. 
The football field is like a community. In that community, there are rules and regulations. If you violate the rules and regulation on the football field, they give you the blow against you, they give the ball to the opponent, they give you yellow card, they give you red card, they ban you from playing. In the community, when you violate, there's the police there, they, there are rules and you pay fines, they can put you in jail. In, 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 in society, you bring people together who are from different, different backgrounds. On the football field, it's the same way. In sports, it's the same way. But you have to work together. Teamwork is important to succeed. All right? So there are life lessons that you learn. And that's why I say my program is about teaching uh, life skills through football. All right? There are life lessons that you learn. For example, we tell the kids, in life, there will be hurdles. There will be speed bumps along the way. You will not always be successful, but you got to keep trying. You got to keep focused. All right? On a football field, if you take a shot on goal and you don't score, so you say, well, I took a shot, so I'll never take another one. You'll continue to try until you succeed. All right? So these are things that that you, you learn through sports as you're developing your mind. You learn to cooperate and coordinate with other people. You learn to accept defeat. All right? You learn to, to, to be gracious when you win, but to respect your opponent. All of these things go hand in hand in, in building the whole person. So when you fail to, to, to connect sports to, to education, then you're not building the whole person. And unless we start to see the importance of it, you know, we, we'll just keep, uh, for me, you know, when, when, we're, when we're drilling, they say left, 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 right, left. We're just in one spot. Yeah. The forward, forward march instruction will not, will not be given. We'll just be in the same old spot. I mean, we have to change our mentality. When, and, and how do you do that? It comes from, the, from like you said, um, we, we, we attempted to do a sports policy document. People say, oh, you know, there's no sports policy. Yeah. We made an attempt. That we brought in, we had a, 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 a conference with, with sports people. People came up with some ideas. Uh, Minister, Tap, Minister Munia Tape appointed a sports advisory group with Willis Knuckles, the late Dunstan McCauley, Josiah Johnson, Granville Dennis, uh, uh, Clement Shuyue and others, but there were certain individuals who were were in in, in sports who felt that um, sports had to be be taken care of by only the young people. That these old people had no no role to play. Okay, now one of the questions I ask the the, the former president of, of of FIFA, Avalanche, was he a young person? The FIFA uh, president. Uh, Seth Blatter, the yeah. young person, the Olympic, all these people, they were all older people. So if you yeah. bring people who have had experience, people who knew about the sports commission, the history of sports, to help develop the document, to say, you, you can't do a sports policy document without doing the history. And those yeah. people knew the history. All right. So there's a draft document that I left at the ministry. And each minister that came, Tony Lawa was there. I shared with him that, that draft document. And Eugene Nangwe, even though I was not at the ministry, I shared within that document. Uh, Ento, uh, Sa Ento, I shared, even Zoga Wilson, I shared that document. I said, the document is here to be developed. But nothing has happened. Look, let me tell you something. Our bureau, Murphy Gray was my assistant minister, Walter Anderson was there, uh, uh, Navarro Siki. We were able to get a town in Cape Mount called Latia to give us. 50 acres of land on Lake Piso. 50 acres. We didn't pay a penny for it. They gave it to us free of charge. The only penny we, money we paid was to survey this land by the Ministry of Lands and Mines. We got that land in 2011. This is 2021. The only thing you see there is a signboard on the road that we put there to say future site of the Liberian uh, 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 sports academy. All right, we have not put the first shovel in the ground to talk about developing that place. All right, so I'm just saying it's 11, 10, 11 years, and the people said if you don't do anything in 10 years, we'll ask for the land back. Mm -hmm. And everybody has been informed about that, and nothing has happened. All right, now we talk about developing facilities, right. Who's developing the facilities? It's the new administration of the Football Association. I mean, during Azeta administration, they acquired 10 acres of land in, in uh, Kerisburg. 
that's where the technical center currently currently is. And I'm not sure whether during Musa Abilities administration, uh, it may have been uh, partially completed, okay? But this new, uh, this new uh, administration has converted the, the practice field at the SKD into an astroturf field with, with bleachers, two side field in, in, I think it's Garnersville or Barnersville, uh, astroturf, the Buchanan Stadium, astroturf, um, Kakata Stadium, it was under Musa Ability, it's astroturf. So now you see the, the football league is being played in different, different places. The facilities are there, all right? So if you want to start, uh, you know, really focusing on sports development, you have to build facilities. Yeah. For example, Sports Commission is where we play basketball. That land is owned by the Torbo family and the Smith family, okay? We're paying rent for that land. All right. At one time, Carlos Smith was saying that they wanted their land back because they could put something meaningful there and make some money based on what government was paying, the peanuts that government was paying for the land. All right. So he's always been talking about wanting the land. All right. We didn't have a basketball court. So there were some funds that were made available by Ms. Mrs. Surly's friend, Dr. Holmes, in uh, $55,000. And we decided, you know what? Let's try and do something at the SKD. So we started and we put a, a gymnasium there. It's not it's not a state of the art gymnasium, but it's it's covered. It's the Olympic size uh, 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 dimensions, and we played international games there. But at least we had something so that in case the Tobo family or the Smith family decided we're taking sports commission away, we had something. But what this group of basketball former basketball players are doing? I mean, I was there, Kileb Duma, for example, the other day down 18th Street. They have a bas basketball rim up against uh, like a fence, and they're teaching kids as young as seven, eight years old how to bounce the basketball. And this is where we, we have to go. Yeah, you know, this is where we have to go. So that that connection between education and sports, we, we have to understand the relationship that you cannot develop the whole person only by developing their mind. Got to be better. Th thank you so much. If you're just joining us, this is Focus on Liberia. We are in conversation with Mr. Mabu Riches, and my guest co-host here is the legendary Mama Musa. <laughs> Let's let bring you a few comments to uh, interact with uh, some of our viewers. They are talking. And uh, first, you, you got, you, you, you got uh, Theresa Riches say, hey, Dad. You uh, want to all the all the kids are watching. <laughs> That's my daughter and grandchildren. Yeah. yeah right. They say they are watching. Anthony Nimla said, or oh, Anthony Sabato Nimla is watching from New Jersey, former founder and striker of Lanco Enforcers and Grand Basel County, number seven. Mm -hmm. Yeah, number seven. And uh, Benedict, did I tell you that I played number seven too? <laughs> <laughs> All of us, number seven. Yeah, you told me last night. <laughs> right, but, but I, I, I really didn't make it into the, um, I didn't even get to two Safi, so, but that's another story. <laughs> uh, Anthony also says, seeing these two legendary men is a privilege. Mr. Richie is one of Liberia's greatest soccer assets. And Mr. Richie, as you are calling, you know, one other thing I've, not, I've never spoken to you before until today that I'm really impressed with is uh, the way you are calling the names of the people. It shows actual connection with the people that you've played with, that you've mentored, that you've coached. Is that what is required really to be, uh, to really have the level of success that you have? Because if that connection is not there, I think we're missing something here. Yeah, you know, um, let, let me just say that, um, um, you know, I just go back a little bit and talk about about the future of football, you know, compare, maybe Benedict was going to ask the question comparing football then and now, but yes. there, there, there is, there is this need to, to recognize the contributions of, of, uh, you know, uh, pioneers or those who, who, who sacrificed a lot for the development of, of sports. You know, um, I remember when we first, the, the, the county meet, uh, we named the, the volleyball trophy, the volleyball trophy after Willis Knuckles, okay, because of his his um, participation with that um, uh, the African Championship. There's a need, 
um, to recognize, uh, you know, great athletes. For example, I was not at the Ministry of, of Labor, Youth and Sports at the time, or the Ministry of Sports at the time when they, they named the, the SKD Stadium. But for me, uh, it was my, 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 if I had had anything to, to do with it, Papa would have named that stadium the one in Boto Memorial Stadium, okay? To, to memorialize um, some of our great, great sports people, Thelma, Mrs. Thelma George, for example, okay? She, I mean, tremendous contribution to the development of, of, of football, all right? I mean, she was at the University of Liberia. Uh, she was a president of Mighty Barro. I think even back in the 60s, they, 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 they put them in jail. You know, they were getting ready to play IE, all the IE. People were in the security, the police and SSS and everything. And something happened. I can't remember, all, know all the details of it. But, you know, <laughs> she was somebody who sacrificed a lot for 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 for, for football. Oh, okay? Sorry. But there's nothing, there's, there's nothing, there's nothing named, there's nothing named after her. Okay? I mean, you talk about people are always saying, Oh, the government is not doing anything for you know for for former players, the players sacrifice. But the question I ask is, what is the football association doing? Is the football association recognizing those who who uh, 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 you know sacrifice? For example, for me personally, I had asked Musa Ability when they were talking about naming the technical center. I said, who has contributed most to the, the training and development of footballers in this country other than Josiah Johnson? It would have been nice if that technical center was named after Josiah Johnson, okay? To recognize and appreciate the contribution that he has made to, to the game. But we, we, we have a tendency of, of politicizing some of these things, all mm -hmm. right? Now, which for me, I, I, I think is wrong, but the government, is being accused of not recognizing, but the, the the institutions themselves are not recognizing their own people. All right, you got you got the the LFA trophy. Why isn't the LFA national championship trophy named after some uh, former uh, Liberian footballer? Why is not a Jackson Weah or a David Momo? Uh, you know, it, it's it's named something else. Why isn't the basketball uh, trophy named after Jim Holder or Jim Minor? or Jimmy McCready, you know, I'm just saying, yeah. recognize your own, all right? It's, that's a need. And if you don't do that, if you don't show appreciation for the people who laid down, you know, who laid the foundation, who made the sacrifices, then then, then it's a problem. Look, um, you talk about um, the young people, right? Players coming up always had players that they admired, okay? Yeah. Okay, you look you look at the, the, the level of the game over the past 10 years or so, 15 years or so, and seeing the decline. You know, Benedict and them, when they were coming up, they had players that they, they looked up to. For me, my, my player was Glaston Ofori. Glaston Ofori was my idol. I mean, for me, I, I just, he, he was a man who had vision on, on the football field, Gladstone would look one way and pass the pass the next. He had eyes all all around his head. He was a player that I admired. Um, you know, I'm an IE, IE man at heart. But there were two players for Mighty Barro that were my favorite players: the late Patrick Arthur, Patrick Domo, and the late Teto. Those two players were my favorite Barro players. All right, those were my favorite Barro players. I would say it anywhere and anytime. Those two players. Patrick Arthur with that left foot, you couldn't take that ball from him. Teto was a dribbler who always was moving forward. I admire those two players. Mm -hmm. All right. But you, you look at, for example, Amadou Sano coming up. Everybody says Amadou Sano, what? He mimicked who? Sakwa Myers. Sapa. Right? He mimicked Sakwa Myers. He played just like Sakwa. All right. Number 14 jersey, for example, when George Weah, President Weah, came to RE. Why did he select 14 jersey? Because he saw Benedict Wiese play. He admired Benedict Wiese. Am I correct? He could have taken any other jersey number. But why number 14 jersey? Because Benedict Wiese made that, that, that number popular. All right? So we have to recognize the contribution and, and of others. We have to emulate them. 
and, and go forward. There's a there's a video out now about a little uh, 11 year old kid that played in the third division in Monrovia. Supposed to be the youngest player to play, you know, organized uh, league games. And and in in the in the, the the video they talk about this kid being the next what George Weir. All right, how will he be the next George Weir? George Weir, people associate George Weir with what number fourteen jersey, right? Number right. 14 jersey is what? Retired. So how would that little kid aspire to be George Weir when that 14 jersey is, is associated with George Weir? George Weir has retired the 14 jersey. So that kid could never be another George Weir. You will have to look for somebody else to admire. All right? I'm just saying, there's a need for, for us to recognize individuals for their contribution. And, and, and until we do this, you know, I, I, I don't know how far we'll go. Yeah. Few, few more comments. Dave Jasse is always in nostalgia when I hear those names like Alexander Peel, Millie Freeman, Mabu Riches, Patty Walker. Thanks for the show and thanks veterans for your contribution to Liberia. You are the real heroes. Yangwe Sese is very happy to be a part of the interview as observer. Uh, Joseph Kokro says, Mr. Riches, any memory of a team called New Horizon and a guy named Minicon? Yeah. Of course, of course, of course, of course. Minicon, uh, Anthony Minicon, uh, Wesley, we all played at CWA together. And I'll tell you, and the reason I got that New Horizon team is from that New Horizon team with you and Morris, Morris Harmon and others. I remember admiring you guys playing. And uh, so at one point when I was recruiting players for IE, I, I called the group IE New Horizon. And uh, so my program, I mean, I'm IE at heart, my program in, in Habel, Named a New Horizon is basically a recruiting ground for Invincible Eleven. So I've sent players to IE already, and you know, uh, if and when IE decides that they want to to reactivate the Majestic team, my New Horizon team is ready. We'll give supply them all the players that they need. But definitely Wesley uh, Minicon, uh, that my New Horizon team uh, is named after your New Horizon team. Thank you, Santa Townsend. Say. Enlightened by the conversation, Mr. Riches, I admire your vision and philosophy for athletics in Liberia. Samuel Sonda, this guy has devoted his whole life to sports in Liberia. Very humble man, not greedy for money, knowledgeable about sports in our country. Kudos, Mr. Riches. Mr. Charles Wolf Wolf, he was going to be here tonight, but uh, due to some technical issues, he's not hey, Charlie. Yeah, Charlie says sports foster integration and the development of life skills. It also has economic benefits. Our grassroots non-traditional academies have always produced talented athletes. We need to revisit them and come out with a holistic approach where education will be the foundation. There were incidental academies at Coconut Plantation, Clara Town, Nucru Town, West Point, Oro, Basa Community, Point Four, Habel, Bomber Hills, Lamco, Harper, and and above all in our schools. I also say, uh, also in Fire Brigade Hall in Greenville. <laughs> <laughs> Back to you, Mr. Wilson. Yeah. Uh, looking back, uh, there have been many games. Uh, what would be the two games that I won what would be one game that I won that actually brought, uh, should I say, set, yeah, complete satisfaction to you? And which one the national team won that brought complete satisfaction and joy to you? Well, I think thanks for that question. Um, I, I somehow had, uh, anticipated that the question would be asked. <laughs> Welcome back. Yeah, I would uh, for for IE. I would say it was the OAU Cup. Uh, we played 
it was a round robin competition and uh, IE needed a draw in that particular match to to lift the trophy Barrow needed needed a win and uh in in the match IE scored first and Teto and Kofi Bruce walked in our goal immediately from the center redeemed the goal and they went ahead two goals to one and the last minute of the match about 30 seconds or so to to the whistle Anthony Gray got a ball attacking the public works goal David Nimler was in the goal and uh I Gray lifted his head as though he was about to cross the football and David Nimler anticipating the cross started moving left and Anthony Gray placed the ball right where his right foot had had left the ground and uh I remember Willard Russell you know running on the field push trying to push the ball into the goal uh we scored that and and lifted that trophy what was well soon uh for me gratifying for me was that josiah johnson who was the at the time coaching baru had lifted the trophy and had to put that trophy back down so we could we could <laughs> i could lift it and we sent johnny grant who was the shortest player on our team to lift that trophy because the trophy was about the size about the height of johnny uh in terms of the national team the six nation tournament uh was was again for me i believe that six nation tournament team is the greatest team that Liberia has had um it's the only team that has won an international competition as far as i know um but on that squad we had some of the greatest players Liberia has fielded uh, benedict you were on that team santos maria paul bro walter uh, walter pelham michael tapla you know uh, i mean just just a tremendous amount of players uh, that were on that squad but we lifted that trophy and for me for the national team i think the, you know that that uh, six nation tournament team was the greatest team that we've had i mean you look at the 1965 team the the photo that had been posted that had david momo garrison saka uh, kucha davis uh, jnj massa senior sam burnett uh, jada williams uh, sam masikwe uh, wani boto uh, 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 alexander peel uh, winston taylor that was a great team as well you know i mean I, i've been privileged uh, growing up to have been around some of you know some great players uh, um, I, i mentioned the jackson we you know being an ie person jackson we are george saka uh, garrison saka philip robinson was a great football player um uh, uh, fanny dempster was a good player uh, gd daniels i mentioned his name james teasel you know uh, some great players uh, i had the opportunity also to play Uh, when we went to the national when the national team traveled to germany for training i mean that's that squad that was there uh, patrick patrick tier walter anderson morris george uh, alosius nimle siku gomez james cito davis samuel to uh, christopher nippe uh, lamfrey james you know uh, anthony gray was on that squad as well i mean they're great great players sylvester sylvester we are yeah we all i mean I've just been privileged to have been around some great footballers and you know all I've learned over the years I try to impart into my 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 current squad again as I said 80% of them are, are students we have the youngest team in the in the Magibi competition right now and uh we've in 3 years we've won fourth division championship we need two points to qualify for the national third division playoffs so uh again Uh, focusing on education first and football you know uh, education first and football so let's go to the question now that says uh sports or football mainly then and now let's compare yeah. how do we make it better I, i think attempts are being made to make it better um uh, back back in the day i think uh players were more committed to the game I mean you had players uh sticking with their teams longer this whole issue of transfer you know transfer money and, and stuff like that and uh, I I think I think what happened once players started uh going you know the professional route it took away a lot of that um uh, like I was saying the players the players doing the uh, late 60s and 70s we had players that we admired we had role models we had people that we wanted to emulate all right um so you had a player like baba george uh, tommy mane for example 
You know, you saw those players playing. Uh, you saw Santos Maria play. You saw Apollo Lawson Tier play. Um, so players growing up during that that era admired those players and wanted to be like them. All right. Um, the players, as I said, were more committed to the game. Today, I think it's more about money, what I can get out of uh, from the teams, as opposed to having the game at heart. Um, running behind the dollar, I think, has 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 caused some problems for us because once those players, for example, Kevin and others who Joe Nambi and others who left, those younger players never had a chance to really see them play because they were playing abroad. All right, so there was this this void, and then with the with the civil crisis. Uh, top players sought, you know, refuge outside. So young players coming up really never, never saw good players play, you know. Um, back back then in the 70s, uh, Benedict, you were, you, you were bear me out. 78, 79, the IE team, St. Joseph team, Barrow team at that time. You had, we, we brought in some foreign players as well, okay. I remember I had gone to, to Ghana to visit my brother, and he took me to the to the uh, uh, the dam in, in the, on the Volta region, and we went to a game, and we saw a team called Aquatex, and I saw Ben Morty, Kofi and Tien, I saw Collins Fargo, and I convinced Sam Burnett. I said we need to bring this team here. It's difficult to go to Ghana and bring players, so when they came, those three players remained, and they played on the IE team. After that, we saw uh, 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 Barrow come in with. Uh, Ishan Smith, Theophila Swansea, uh, Thomas Apoma, uh, you know, Sam Asari went to St. Joseph. So Prosper Tindy from Ivory Coast, we saw foreign foreign players coming and, and, and participating in our league. And I think it elevated the standard of the game. All right. So I think uh, uh, back then our standard was much higher. Today, uh, I mean, to be frank, I, I, I stopped watching football. I, I, you know, to, to, I'd rather go to, to the third division, fourth division, and go to, to watch first division football. It's only now that, I, you know, my team is involved that I'm really going back to, to watch football games. But I think what the Football Association is doing now, if they continue, for example, every, every team in the third division, I, my team, for example, received $1,500 uh, from the, from the, the football association, I think it's COVID funds. All right. I'm supposed to be getting, we're supposed to be getting the second trench. Every team in the third division got 10 footballs. Um, the sub associations were all given <coughs> motorcycles to be able to have the people go throughout the counties to promote the sport. Every, every sub association was given a laptop and printer so they can be able to make their reports and stuff like that. I'm just saying what is happening now, the atmosphere that uh, um, the football atmosphere is ripe for football development. Uh, like I mentioned, in, in Magibi, we've seen under 12, under 15, under 17 tournaments going on. This is in the right direction. Once you start playing at that level, for example, just recently before the final listing was made for the team that's going to represent Liberia in Sierra Leone, Coach Ansu came to, to Habel. Uh, to Smelotis, and they had they had tryouts there, and from that tryout, they selected a player from from Zodiac Stars. Zodiac Stars is a, is an academy team that uh, Thomas Sompon, former goalkeeper for IE, has. He he works with Firestone as an architect. He has a pretty large uh, academy program. So the coach came outside of Montserrado, okay, to look for players. My 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 players from Cutting Tree. So two players from Harbour Cutting Tree area. Are on that selection going to to Sierra Leone, and that's how you have to start start um, building the program by going outside and then and identifying uh, talents. I mean, there are talented players outside of Monrovia, and when we continue to just look at Monrovia-based teams, who will not develop. You look at Willie Marshall came from Bomi, uh, Mayango Jala from uh, uh, Magibi, you know, Simon Mata, uh, Ezekiel Doe, and them came from Maryland. There are players all over the country. And un until we start, you know, the, the league is in such a way that you can start to spot talents from all over, um, I think uh, football will, will start to, de to develop because this is the key, to be able to have your eyes all over the place. 
And with the third division league, for example, um, in, in Magibi, we have 11 teams, all right? The two top teams in that group will meet the two top teams in the other 14 counties. So you have 30 team playoff. So with those 30 teams being, you know, going into a competition, there are a lot of players to look at. So, you know, this is where I think the, the, the game has, you know, has taken a, a new trend. You got, you got teams traveling, for example, in, we, in Magibi, we play in Smelotis and we play in Kakata. So, you know, we're traveling back and forth, one AstroTurf or natural grass. It's a good opportunity for, for our kids. Um, so I think, for example, another thing is happening there. Uh, I've seen youth referees, young referees, 15, 16 year old referees being recruited, okay, at an early age. So you get kids who are interested in being referees at an early age, as opposed to somebody who's 25, 30 years old looking for lip dime and say, let me go and become a referee. So you have somebody who's developing the love for the game, you know, at an early age. I mean, if those kids start refereeing uh, fourth division games and stuff like that, I'm just saying to you, in three, four years, they will be ready for, for you know, uh, uh, that nice uh, competition. Thank you, thank you so much. Uh, yeah, one uh, last thing, one last thing, one last so, thing, one last thing, Benedict. Uh, you cannot yes. coach in the fourth division, third division, unless you have. A, a license. So the D license is the minimum requirement for a coach. So this is another thing that's happening. You got people who coaches now who are being trained handling teams. Okay. Whereas before, oh, I used to play, so I can I'm a coach. You follow what I'm saying to you? I mean, I I I end up coaching IE, but after the Six Nation tournament, Josiah Johnson, Victor C and myself were sent to Germany where we got our A license. Okay, so I became a licensed coach, all right? And so what Henry Brown, being the technical director and the new administration is saying, we want qualified coaches at all levels of football. And I think that's one of the things that will develop the game. Benende, you were saying something. Uh, between the, in the working relationships between the Liberian government or the Ministry of Youth and Sports, uh, the Liberian Football Association and the Liberian Basketball Association, who carries the greater responsibilities to develop uh, any of this? Any of the sports? Yeah. Well, you know, the the Ministry of Youth and Sports is not there to develop football or basketball or track and field. It's the responsibility of the federations. You know, you continue to hear non-interference by government, non-interference by government. That's why you have mm -hmm. Football Association, all right? That's why you have FIFA, you have the uh, FIBA, the basketball. That's why you have the Olympic Committee, for example. Uh, a lot of people believe that the Olympic Committee is the parent body of all the sporting de and, uh, uh, bodies. That's not true. The Olympic Committee is there to organize Olympic events and to provide training for, for athletes to prepare for the, for the Olympics. The Olympic Committee has no jurisdiction, no authority over F FIFA, over FIBA. The only, their only responsibility is for Olympics. Now, the, the, the charter, Olympic charter says clearly that the International Olympic Committee recognizes the independence and autonomy of all international federations, all right? So if FIFA is having an election, the Olympic Committee, National, uh, International Olympic Committee cannot say, we're going to con we, we have to conduct your elections. They don't have any jurisdiction, or we're going to appoint uh, Benedict Wiese as Secretary General. They don't have any authority to do that. And that, that also follows in terms of the, 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 the Liberia National Olympic Committee and the, the various federations. The Olympic the, uh, Liberia National Olympic Committee is not the parent body to LFA. If LFA wants to have the elections, they don't get the permission of the Olympic Committee. They don't get the permission of the Ministry of Youth and Sports, all right? So basketball federation, all these federations have their constitution. And what they do is they 
they go according to the constitution. If there are issues that need to be resolved, they can come to the ministry, okay? If there's a need for arbitration or something, they can appoint a committee, including the Olympic committee to be part of that. If you wanna have elections and you decide you want the Olympic committee to supervise your elections, that's your prerogative. But it's not, you do not have to, they do not have to conduct your elections. So I'm just saying, people say, oh, the government are developing football. That's not our, the government's responsibility. It's the federation's responsibility to develop the programs, all right? Say, you know, if there's a need for basketball facilities, track and field facilities, whatever it is, you present that to government and then government is supposed to be able to find the, 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 the money to be able to do that. For example, we went to Brazil and we asked the same question. The national team of Brazil, who supports it? Is it the government? They told us no. The government does not support the national team of Brazil. It's, it's uh, private corporations. The, 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 the oil company will take, for example, the football, football national football team. Another thing, another entity would take another sporting discipline. And so you got sponsorship. Okay, so it's the responsibility of these federations to go out and get sponsorship to help yeah. organize the league and help to promote their, their activities. These international bodies provide assistance, financial assistance to, to these federations. And <coughs> the membership have to be able to get out there. And that's why when we started at first with the, the subsidies to the federation associations in 2006 going forward, we said, use this money to reconnect with your, your parent body. Yeah. Go to Congress, okay? At, uh, uh, introduce yourself to them. Tell them what you want to do and see how they can help you develop your program. But some federations just decided, okay, the money is here. Uh, Mr. Richard, we're going to, we want to go to Congress. We, we got this meeting we want, we want to go to, and we said no. This money now is supposed to be used for developing your discipline. For example, I, I talked about what Lloyd Brunell did. He took money, he built table tennis tables, and he took them to communities to help develop the interest in sports. I remember I said to the Volleyball Federation, volleyball, um, one of the sports I wanted to see push was volleyball. And so we, we decided that we'll have a volleyball um, tournament at the corner of Broad and Lynch Street. You remember there was a football field down there? I can't remember what they call that field, right at the corner of Lynch and, 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 mm -hmm. and, and Broad Street down in the hole. And they organized um, volleyball uh, yeah, games yeah. there. Yeah. And you will be amazed the number of persons who were on the side were watching the game. And people were asking, what the name of this game? What, what, what do they call the other game here? They had never seen volleyball before. All mm -hmm. right. So, so we said to them, this was, you know, our suggestion was go out there and promote the game. Okay. And so they had the tournament there and people were watching the game, were all excited. And I said, for example, go into uh, uh, Stephen Tauber Estate, organize volleyball competition among the different areas there. Even if, if, if uh, Benedict lives in area A, for I don't know, I'm, I'm, not, I'm just using that as an example. And I live in area B or area C. And Dennis lives in area D. Uh -huh. We can organize the tournament amongst ourselves, okay, in, in the community so that volleyball uh, gets introduced again to the community. People get an interest in the game. But again, people were not interested. They were interested in going to under 17 tournament in, in South Africa, all right? I had gone to Brazil and I knew that we didn't have any players that were 17, under 17 to go play competition. All right. I came back in 10 days and passports have been made to go to, to South Africa to play under 17 competition. And I questioned, I said, how is that possible? And the secretary general said to me, well, you know, uh, we can't question the children age, you know, blah, blah, blah. And, and so I said to them, OK, since you say all of these guys here are under 17, bring the bring the county meet volleyball uh, uh, registration sheets. And let's compare it with what you have here in the passport. We brought the passport. We brought the volleyball registration from, county, from the county meet. 27-year-old man registering as a 17-year-old. 28-year-old man, say 17-year-old. Somebody who, who went to play competition in all African games in, in Nigeria four years ago was 18 years old. And now four years later, 
the under 17. So we continue to to lie about our ages. Yeah. And, you know, when I talk about it, oh, you know, they won't paint me black. But I'm just saying, if we are to develop, then we have to develop the proper age group. Why are we why are we lying about our ages? And then we went to we went to South Africa with all these 20 summer year old people and they flogged us. We came back, we didn't win one game there. All right. But people just wanted to go to travel. So this is what I'm saying. So instead of focusing on developing the sport, they're interested in traveling. And this is where the focus is on the roof and not on the foundation. Wow. Thank you. We are almost uh, out of time. There's a comment here from Kevin Soko. He said, Mr. Richard, thank you for helping me to be who I am in track and field as, as a coach, 1984 assistant Olympic coach of Liberia today. I'm uh, in IAAF and IOC recognized diploma coach now living in the USA. Praise God. Thank God for that. Mr. Mr. Wissel, let's, let's uh, we time to draw down the curtains. If you have any more questions or comment before we go to Mr. Riches. Benedict, are, are you freezing? Uh, okay, yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> I didn't get you. No, I said we're about to close. So if you have comments or questions for Mr. Riches before we get him for his final words. Yeah. Yes, I, I, if I can be put Mabu on the spot right now. Please do that. So now his former players are watching. Uh, if you were to recruit, let's say magically, through miracles, you know, we all turn young. Okay. <laughs> and you are asked to put a Drive. team together today. Uh, Who will be your 11 players? Uh, I'm writing it down. What a Baro, okay. RE. Yeah. Is it for the Lone Star or for Baro? Excluding or me. No, you can't be excluded, my man. <laughs> you, can't be, you can't be excluded. No, the, you're we're talking about job. Yeah. Huh? Now leave it with the coach, Benedict. And you say I must select? Yeah. <laughs> but how you will lead yourself? Yeah. Um, hmm. Goalkeeper? Hmm. I would say Boy Cooper. Hmm. Right back. As I said, um, Johnny okay. Grant. Okay. Um, Johnny Grant, right back, uh, left back, Anthony Strongman Langway, uh, Clay Andrews, uh, Sakba in the middle, uh, midfield players, Anthony Gray, TJ Gray, uh, Teto, um, that's how many we got there? No, seven is Teto. No, no, how many how many players we got there so far? Seven. Seven. You want me to uh, go? Benedict Wiese. Benedict Wiese. Um Ben Morty, left winger. That's nine. Uh Hmm. I know Baba George would have been on my team. Uh, one more top striker. Hmm. Santos Maria. Santos. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know where you where you started from because I didn't hear one in Boto. No, no, I wouldn't. I mean, oh, okay. to be frank, to be frank. Um, I didn't see one of two play many games. Okay. I know he's a great player. Uh, you know, I may have seen one of two play once or twice, but um, I, I'm I'm basically talking about the players that I had the opportunity to really watch yeah. in, in more details. I mean, I was young when I when I saw Jackson Weir and George Sacco and Garrison Sacco and Philip Robinson, you know, and those players. I was young, 
and those were the names that were out there. Yeah. But the players who, you know, I had the opportunity to see play, yeah, those are the ones I would select. Uh, what was what, what, somebody named Joker? Joker, yeah, Joker could play, Joker could play, but, um, you know. He didn't make the team. Yeah. Uh, Joker was a good player. I mean, I, I don't want to select all the IE players, but, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you know, during during the period where I was involved, uh, IE, IE well, dominated football a lot. I mean, mm -hmm. I mean, uh, later on, Barrow started dominating us, but I mean, you remember Benedict, we played the, we played those PRC games. You know, we play a lot of PRC tournaments. And uh, I remember one game we played the Jeffrey Batu tournament and I decided I wasn't going to, I wasn't going to coach. And, uh, uh, you know, they, they actually said, they sent to Minister Blay our lineup. They said, if I don't see, they didn't see Seko Gomez, Sakba, Johnny Grant, they actually give us a lineup of players. If they didn't see them, uh, then they would know where Benedict Wiese and, and, and uh, Benicia Charlie and them would leave from to, to travel out of the country. So it was, you know, it, it was ridiculous. We were playing these games, raising money for other people. And, and I remember one game we played for, for Nicholas Podia. Um, Willa Russell came to the ministry yeah. and he asked Minister Blade, he said, uh, how much are we, how much are we, are we getting to play this game? And Minister Blade talk, used his walkie talkie and he talked to Speaker Podia and within minutes, Speaker Podia came from the Capitol building to, at the time, it was a ministry the, uh, commission there on Fifth Street with a couple of uh, of his uh, security. And asked Russell, said, what, ask me the question you asked Fred Blay. And so he asked him, he said, how much are we getting to play? And Podia told him, basically, you will take anything we give you, otherwise we'll ban IE from playing. And uh, so Willa said, the reason I'm asking is because we have the IE football team, we have the Majestic, the junior team, we have the IE men's basketball, we got the best Majestic basketball, and women, we're supporting five teams. So we're playing in tournament. My question is how much we're getting so we know how to, to disperse the money to our various teams. But I'm saying those are some of the pressures that we were under right. during that PRC period where we were playing for just about every PRC member. And, and basically no money coming to, to the clubs. But again, I dominated a lot of those those games. Uh, you know, uh, I remember one game, uh, CIC Doe decided to play for IE. What he used to do, he used to play, come and play maybe. Ladies and gentlemen, this is focused on Liberia. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I was saying during those PRC games, uh, I remember one time when uh, the CIC decided that he was going to play for IE. Well, he Barrow. And, uh, yeah, but you know he used to sometimes play for Barrow ten minutes. You know, come and just warm up. You know, and when, whenever he got a ball, nobody could take the ball from him. You know that type of thing. Uh, but he decided he was going to play one whole half for IE. <laughs> you know. And we were playing, it, it was it was a problem for us. But I mean, those are things that you know we remember, and uh, we just want to, you know, to say that uh, football was good back then, and we hope that it will get better in the in the years to come. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, uh, Benedict. Uh, your coach just answered the question. You have any more question or comment before we go back to him? I, I missed the question because there was a technical problem. No, no, he, he was answering your question. He just finished. Let, let ask your last question so we can go to. Uh, we can go for the closing. Oh, I, I should ask the last question. Yeah. Okay. You got your course, so let's have fun. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um. The, the, the decision you made, um, talking about I becoming a permanent uh, right wing, uh, I remember there was a game that uh, IE and Barrow was playing, I uh, were playing, 
and um, we we were. I mean, you made a decision. Okay, let me just cut this question short. What was it that you that you saw that convinced you to say, okay, we say will be far for the railway right position? You know, Benedict, um, I, I, I believe as a coach, um, you, you have systems of play, right? I remember when I yeah. came home in 78, I started with our statistic sheets. You remember we had the, we, we awarded you the highest goal scorer. You got a trophy. We, yeah. we said that the highest goal scorer would be the person who had the combination of assists and goals. So you count you counted the number of assists plus your goals would be the highest goal scorer. Yeah. Albert now has scored more goals than you had, but you had a combination of goals and assists that uh, led you to take that trophy. Now, one of my coaching strategies was always to match type against type. So with my statistics sheets, I used to go and watch other teams play. Let's say, for example, if I was playing Barrow, the fifth game of the league, I watched Barrow play the four, four games in a row, right? And from my statistics, mm -hmm. I would look at Barrow's team and say, okay, Barrow played four matches. Uh, uh, Barcuba was in the goal. Uh, Roland Brown was Roland uh, Brown was right full back. Samuel To was left left full back, and I would select Barrow's team or St. Joseph's team or Barman's team based on the statistics from the, the their past games, right? And then I would say, okay, I've drawn Barrow's team based on on their previous games, who they played in those positions. Then I'll say, okay, which left winger, for example? Do I have that can overcome Roland Brown? We had Mille, we have Vinicius Charlie, and we have Ben Morty. So I selected based on the, the characteristics of Roland Brown, I selected Ben Morty. Ben was a fast player, tricky dribbler, and stuff. So going to the left fullback position, I looked at the players we had. Who did we have to play right wing? Francis Boca, Benedict Wiese. All right. So Based on who, were, who who Barrow was feeling, it was it was no brainer that that whole area that left left full back position was the Monrovia Kakata Highway for us. <laughs> if we were going <laughs> to pass, we we're going to pass through there all day long. So, in terms of selecting you to play that position, it was based on the fact that my success as a coach basically was matching type against type. I drew. Barman's team, I drew St. Joseph's team, I drew Cedar's team, and I looked at the personnel, the personnel I had on I's team, and I matched them against the opponent. So on paper, my team was a better team. And that was the strategy that I used. So, yeah. I mean, you know, in terms of making that selection, this is how I made that selection. Okay. Thank you. So we say your final comments. Now we you, you heard the coach. What well, uh you know, and personally, on uh, when I was with RE, uh, Mabu and uh, Willie Russell uh, were actually two people who, along with Seku Gomez, that I was close to. And uh, so it was always, for me, it was always an honor. Uh, it was always uh, a challenge to me, you know, not to disappoint them, yeah, to make sure that, uh, because wh when I went, when I went to RA, playing football was, playing football was just a fun, there was somebody, you know, and laugh at the person, you know, I didn't take it seriously until I went to RA, and there was a man named Roosevelt Boo. Yep. You know, yeah. Uh, for lack of better word, he was he was an RE crazy fan. You know, they men would wear yellow t-shirts, go on the field, argue with everybody. And we played one game, one of my first games, 
in one of my first games for IE against Barrow, we lost the game and uh, we came to run a street uh, to the place where we had dressed. And a guy said it down, you know, with tears coming from his eyes. So, so I was looking at him, you know, I asked him, I said, but what am I crying? I said, oh, that guy is an IE guy, you know, he's crying because of the game. You know, and from that point, I began to recognize that playing football in Liberia then was a serious thing for some people. You know, it may have been something funny to me. It may have been something that I just did because, you know, I was blessed with the talents. But that people who went to watch the game, you know, it seems that their whole life depended on it. You know, so after that, I, I began to, you know, take football seriously, you know, and then I ran into Mambo, Willa Russell, and, uh, and they treated me like a, you know, a brother, small brother, you know, there was no, that I went to Mambo's place, I was invited there, and then uh, I still have the letter that, on which he wrote the, the note, I remember uh, in July, May, and then I was studying with we Akiam to play uh, Ghana Blaster. And he said, What would be your reaction if you know, I arranged for you to go uh, to the stage on a uh, football scholarship? You know, and I, I was in the hallway at Police Academy. You know, I still have the note here. You know, so. You know, I want to say personally that uh, thank you very much. Uh, you treat everybody with respect. Um, well, I also did. Uh, unfortunately, we lost him. You know, but uh, my time in IA, being around you, being around Will, meeting other people who are not footballers, you know, it helped me personally to the, develop my own my ambitions. To, to make sure that uh, if I wanted to be like, you know, what you people were, that I had to do better. So I thank you very much for all that you did for me. You're most welcome, Benedict. It's been a, you know, um, a similar honor, you know, getting to know you and um, appreciating who, you, you know, you are and how, what you've been and your contribution to IE. Uh, you mentioned Roosevelt Bull. You know, and it just made me to to remember the Fure Kakai and the Kariatu and uh, Tonya and Majua mm -hmm. and others, uh, you know, uh, fans of IE who who really give their their lives for for this for this Invincible Eleven that we we played for. But uh, again, I I always remember the game you played when you graduated from high school, that game there, <laughs> maybe you can tell us about that big close, but I'm just saying, um, I remember you coming on to, you know, we registered you to play and uh, you went, you got your, you came on the field with your gown and the whole yeah. stadium went upside down. <laughs> so maybe yeah. you can tell us about that, that day. What, what, what were, what was your feelings? You know that. What were your feelings that that particular day? I mean, the, the fact when we what? started the game, Benedict was not there, and then you know Benedict came on the field, and everybody, whoa, whoa, whoa you know, it just yeah. I, mean, I, it was... I, I was at the graduation program, and um, they were calling names, and I was there because we had a combined graduation ceremonies with uh, Tot Mahal. So they, they, they taught my heart first, and I was wishing that they were going to do the shout out first. So I sat out there looking around, you know, to see whether Willow was there, because the arrangement was that he was going to pick me up. So mm -hmm. I was sitting there, and my <laughs> wife now, who was my girlfriend, uh, was sitting there in the audience. My sister was there, you know, my brother was there. So, <laughs> you know, sitting there, and I was just looking, and then suddenly they, they got to us, and they were going alphabetically. <laughs> and, <laughs> you know, oh, boy. And, yeah, and W was last. 
And I was looking, I was looking, I said, wow. You know, by the time I get to the game, you know, they, it will be all over. So anyway, you know, they finally called me. So I look at my, my, my girlfriend and then, uh, you know, because I have told her already. So she got out. And then by the time she got out, she, she, had, she was going outside to see what else, Willa was there. And then I saw Willa standing up, you know, looking around. Throwing that, you know, throwing signs to me. And then uh, I left. I went to my sister and my brother. I said, I have to go play football, uh, you know, play football game. And my sister said, Oh, you know, there is a day you made us to come here and you leave me, you know. So I said, <laughs> so I said Sister, well, uh, you know, please, you know, I have to go. So anyway, you see, my case, I hugged my brother and they went back to New Peter. So, when I got on the field, it was the first time that actually I began to recognize that, you know, my ability as a football player, you know, my skills, you know, was uh, moving at a, a different level, mm -hmm. you know, in a different direction of uh, excellent performance. So when I got there, you know, the, the stadium where you outside, people can see from there. So when I enter, and somebody said, Oh, yeah, Mama Musa there. You know, and, and the people up there turn around, they say, Hey, 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 hey. So I went on and there. The first question I asked was that, You know, you register me. When I said, Oh, don't worry, we took care of everything. And then when I walk on the field, they eat. Enthusiasm, you know, yeah, you know, and I, I began to say to myself, wow, you know, I, I must be a good player. Amen. I must be a good player because all oh, alone, my boy, I did. People did. I, you, I don't remember that I played only four, uh, what, three and a half, four years in Liberia before I left the country states. You know, so it was not, uh, you know, Something like this, uh, you know, he played 10 years, you know, in Liberia. Yeah, after that, I uh, came to the state after you raised that scholarship for me. You know, so that game, it meant a lot to me because I, I began to see that, you know, I was appreciated mm -hmm. and that uh, every game that I played, I had to perform uh, well. Mm -hmm. and, so, um, so I, the next... That the next before you end that, uh -huh. you were at uh, Sanford Dennis before going to Shallow Tower, and somebody paid your right. fees. Tell us about that story. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, so the one time, you know, uh, Shallow Tower, I, I play in a school, uh, high school league, play for Sanford Dennis. Sanford Dennis was actually a junior high school uh, uh, in Morovia. But what happened is that they had a next school, and that next school was not even connected to Sanford Dennis, which was a junior high school. But the next school went and registered in the high school league, but they, but they, have, they had no players to play for them. So we impersonated them <laughs> in the high school league. <laughs> you know? And, and my mom, up to now, I, I asked myself, well, I said, well, how did these people didn't, you know, recognize that, mm -hmm. you know, that we were not a real high school team. And we played well Heston, we almost, <laughs> we almost knocked them out. So, so Jared Williams, who became a football commentator, was going Charlotte over. And uh, he, after, it was a, a recess year. So Sapo was not far from Charlotte over. So, so guys, I will walk. Pass in front of Shatter. So Jerry saw me, he called me. He called my name. And you better do with that. I said, Yeah. He said, You know, he was in his senior year. That's around 76, 75 years, 76. He said, Oh, you know, I want for you to come to Shatter. You know, don't, don't go to where so you can come to Shatter because they expect every football player to either go to Shatter or, or worse. So, <laughs> <laughs> After we finished talking, yeah, I would think about. I told him, I said, I would think about it. We finished 
talking, he put his hands in the pocket, he gave me 10 cents. 10 cents for me to, <laughs> for me to go play for Shadow Tower. <laughs> you know? So, uh, you know, I talk, uh, I, I mean, 10 cents, it, it punches a lot, of, I use it to buy a lot of color, you know. <laughs> it a few colors for me to, to, to eat something. So, so I say, so now today, Jerry, yeah, we are friends, you know, and he always mentioned that even as a uh, radio commentator, he always invited us. So I said, Jerry, 10 cents, 10 cents. <laughs> you know, but yeah, but in those days, you know, 10 cents was like a, a big thing to, to, to me. You know. Yeah. So, so my yeah. son, if you do that conversion, what is 10 cents in Liberia today? Mr. Richard, you wanted to say something about that transfer fee? <laughs> 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 no, I won't, I won't comment on that transfer fee. <laughs> okay. You know. Uh, hmm. Wonderful, wonderful story. I really, really. That's what I say. Back, back, back then. Back, Go back then, it was not about money. No. Uh, to, no. Today, it's all about money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and, and something, uh, and something uh, that I just before, you know, you close up. And something Mabo about Liberian football right now. I still listen, I still talk to people, but nobody has been able to tell me uh, that, oh, there is a young guy, you know, Paul like Johnson, you know, or Peter Flomo, this kid here, we think that he will be good. You know, I saw the kid play, I thought, you know, when I saw him play, I said to myself, wow, this guy, you know, if he continues, he will be a good player. The quality of play, you know, I may be wrong, but I haven't, you know, I haven't gotten that kind of impression about Liberian football or you know, basketball. The, 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 again, I, I can't speak about basketball because I have not seen, I haven't, Going to the mm -hmm. basketball gym since I don't know, but okay. they are talented players, uh, young footballers. Okay, uh, like, like the little kid, the kid, 16, 15, 16 year old kid from my my academy, uh, Rafael Peters. He has a great okay. future. Okay, but he needs okay. to be mentored. He needs, you know, uh, already we're starting to see him, you know, pump his chest out, you know, and we, we got to let him know, hey, you know. Not because you have been selected, you have you, you have arrived, you know. Um, there are some on the the uh, I think it's called Lead Academy that uh, that uh, Siku Moniba is attached with, uh, attached to. Okay. Um, you know, there, there are a couple of players. I mean, there was a, a kid that came from my academy called Rufus Saki. He played for I two years. Um, uh, another one called Shuli Deco. Uh, she, everybody calling Shuli mm -hmm. Deco. His name is uh, Slim Kuya. He had the talent, but um, again, you know, the issue of focusing so much on on foreign based players, you know, because the person play in Europe, or, so we bring them over some of the local talents, and so mm -hmm. you find that a lot of talented young players are not really being utilized. Because people believe that, you know, the national team has to win, and mm -hmm. and we got to go bring the players from abroad and stuff like that. Yeah. For me, you know, mm -hmm. if if I were in, involved, the local talent would be the ones I would use. Mm -hmm. You know, because you know these foreign players come, they they have their contracts, they don't want to sacrifice, so they're not playing with you know with their heart. You know, they, they're thinking about the contracts. If I get injured here, the insurance, you know, and so. But the, the local ones are the ones who are trying to make it, so they'll give their all. I mean, there are a lot of, you know, I'm sure a lot of young, talented players. I mean, for, for example, I know, uh, you know, in, in the Havel area, there are one or two players who, young ones who, you know, could possibly make it. But again, it's, it's about nurturing them, you know, giving them guidance. Because the thing is, as soon as you score one goal, bam, everybody won't care you abroad. So everybody yeah. thinking about, you know, going outside instead of honing their skills and developing their skills, you know, so that when they are actually ready for international, they can perform, 
you know, they, be, they believe because you dribble two person, you score one goal, or you score a hat trick, so you're ready for Europe. So everybody's thinking about going, everybody's thinking about going, and that's, you know, focusing the, the efforts on on their game. So uh, we have to change that mentality. We have to, again, uh, you have the, for example, you have waffle competition, right? Um, we had the county meet some years back, and uh, I, I had asked Baba George, uh, uh, Samson Gabra, Coco Rare, uh, a number of, you know, retired players to, to go to the county meet games and scout to look for, you know, all-star players. So they came back with about 40 players. And we started doing some tryouts and stuff. We came down to about 24 players. And then the LFA in, informed us that we had an opportunity to play in, in uh, you were invited to play in Wafu. And so I, I told them, I told the LFA, I said, you know what? Um, we will use 50% of the squad that will go, will come from the county all-star, okay? But at the time they were calling the group Mabu Richie 11 and stuff, you know, nonsense. They were, you know, uh, because they felt that, uh, you know, the ministry should not be involved. You're having a content meet competition. What competition you don't have all star players? Okay. So we're recommending, okay, these are the all stars. Use some of these all stars because the idea behind the content meet is to identify new talent. Right. All right. And they're saying, yeah. Well, these guys don't have international experience. How would they get international experience unless they play? So since Wafu is not a major competition, take these young players, expose them. They will play in Wafu two or three matches. Now they got two or three international caps under their belt. All right? Now they're prepared. But if you don't expose them, how would they get the international experience? Yeah. And so on that particular trip, we administered to this ground and 50% of that squad uh, uh, ended up, you know, coming from the county meet. And there's a, 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 a kid called Emmanuel Wane who played for IE, okay? He went on that trip. And the foreign coach, uh, we played an international match. The foreign coach selected him to play left back. And he was declared man of the match, okay? He has a county meet player who would not have gotten an opportunity to play, you know, had he not been given that chance to go to... to uh, to play in Nigeria, you know. So again, uh, you know, there, there are talented players out there, but we just have to to be really truly committed to to uh, selecting, you know, giving the young people a chance. Yeah. So, so, Mr. Richards, we we see now, and that's my the final question. You can make your closing statement that a lot of football now in Liberia is people are watching the offense of our teams in Europe. <laughs> When, when I watched football in the 80s, we never had something like that. I don't know if this is a good thing or a bad thing for the development of uh, football in Liberia. Well, it, it has affected attendance at games, okay? Because everybody running to the video club to go watch, to go watch the, you know, Chelsea, Manchester and stuff, you know, and so the attendance at football games have dropped, you see? So um, it's not only in Liberia. I remember we, we took the female national team to, to Nigeria. You know how the international games. Everybody is focused on on on, on that. I mean, uh, I remember in 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 uh, the neighborhood coconut plantation neighborhood, my son had a had, had a vacant lot, and the children were playing tournament. And I asked them, I said, I don't see any IE or Barrow yet. I just see Manchester, Real Madrid. The little <laughs> kid asked me, IE, who what what do you call IE and Barrow? You know, <laughs> the, the kids didn't even know IE and Barrow. You know what I'm saying? But the teams that were Manchester, Arsenal, you know, Real Madrid. And so everybody, I mean, you got people who are paying dues to Real Madrid, Manchester, but they're not willing to pay dues to their local clubs. They're not willing to pay, make contribution to the national team. You know, so it has affected the game in, in, in such a way. Um, I think if we can, can start to play some midweek games if some of these facilities will have lights. Again, the other issue is security. How do people get home in the night? You know, motorcycles after certain yeah. hours. Hmm. You know, and uh, so if people are not coming to the, the clubs will not be making money, so it's, it's a problem. For example, in, <laughs> I tell you, I played I think 12 games in the in the in the fourth division league. 
And my total getting take from the 12 game was 2,800 Liberian dollars, divided by 170. Wow. You know, I to tell you how much money I made from the game. <laughs> you know, uh, my team is playing, my team is playing this, uh, my team is playing tomorrow. They're going to Kakata. It's $80 for a bus to go to Kakata. You go to Kakata, as big as and the, the population is in Kakata, nobody goes to the game. You know, we played there the last time. I don't think I don't think there were thirty people in the stadium. You know, wow. so it, it's it's a problem. Before you go, or uh, Joseph Coco said, before you leave, please, could you list your all-time five LeBron basketball players to stay for you in the basketball? The people don't want us to leave from here tonight. Okay, Bas basketball, basketball. Uh, number one, Jimmy McCready. All right, uh, number one, Jimmy McCready. Um, another top basketball player, uh, Matthias Nimlin. Uh, another top basketball player, um, uh, David Chair. It's another good basketball player. Five, two more. Eh? Um, yeah. Oh, I, I would call a name, but you don't. You don't even know that name. Way back. Uh, so I'm not even about to call the name. Uh, but uh, wow! The Charles play basketball. Charles was basketball called? players. Two other basketball. Players. Charles was played. Yeah, he was good. Good basketball player. But let me let me let me just add. Maybe Hall. Who will? Who will? Basketball player. The late uh, Josephine Wula. Was another very good basketball player, three point shooter. I mean, I mean, there, there are a lot of talented basketball players. Uh, 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 Abu right. Williams is another good one. Yeah, you know, Abu Williams was good. Um, I remember right. saying uh, Gaba Gaba play. He was good. I mean, right. you know, we've had some good players. Uh, David, uh, Joseph Robinson was a good player. Uh, uh, Mobutu Kroma was a good player. I mean, Kojo Anderson has some, you know, talented players there. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Kileb Duma was a good player. I mean, there are a lot of basketball players that were great. Thank you. Thank you. But um, I would say Jimmy McCready. Even, even the late Jim Minor was a fantastic defensive player. Outstanding. One of the best defensive players. The one who used to coach uh, basketball. He coached uh, Barrow. Yeah. Jim Crow, he used to call him. Yeah, yeah. You know, uh, yeah, no, I mean, thank you, thank if, you, if you thank you so much, Mr. Richards. I just uh, we really, really appreciate your time here, and for all those that are watching us, I know we uh, we really want to have you back if you are still around here in the states or even in Liberia. We want to have you. So, if you can go, give us your closing comments as soon as you unfreeze. And then we can uh, yeah, drop one freeze. Dennis, uh, I um, we need to get in con. We need to stay in contact. Um, yeah. See how we can, you know, rally some support for your program. Thank you. Thank you so much. Now let's get your closing comments. Did you hear me? Very well. Thank you so much. We appreciate it. Yes, I heard you. Th thank you. We will okay. keep in contact. And Magic we Benny, we want you to come back. Nice to see you again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but <well>, you too. <laughs> Before, yeah. Right. <laughs> Any last word you want to say before you we take leave of you, sir? You talking about you talking to Mabu? Yeah, Mister Richard, your last your last comments, your final comments before we take leave of you. Well, again, a big thank you to both of you for inviting me. Um, it, it's been a lot of fun. Um. Again, sports sports is a uh, you know something that I say is in my DNA. I have a passion for it, um, but um, I believe that education and sports is what we should try to to promote because uh, uh, sports and education builds the whole person. And so my commitment is you know even though I'm way up there, getting up there in age now, uh, but um, I'm, I'm going to continue to to work in the interest of the youth and. Anywhere and anyhow, I can, have, you know, develop and promote sports. I would definitely be involved. So thank you again for the invitation. 
Thank you so much for coming. And uh, thank you, Mr. Wise, the legendary Mama Musa for making the connection and having this, you know, all important program. <laughs> Every time we are closing our broadcast, we play the song, we are all Liberian. So whether you are IE or Baro, St. Joseph, Batman, or LPRC Olives, Liberia is the see only that. country we have. And see that, let's do our <laughs> best to make Liberia that glorious land of liberty. On that note, we want to say thank you so much. Good night Amen. and God bless you. We are happy